I'm on a mission to test barbecue conspiracy theories about how Franklin Barbecue makes such amazing briskets. Some people might say I'm obsessed with it, but I'm just a normal guy who wants to make the best brisket possible and wears a tinfoil hat so Aaron Franklin can't read his thoughts. <laughs> Anyway, some of my viewers think that Aaron Franklin might be wet brining his briskets in salt water or beef stock or some other concoction of salty fluid, and that might be the secret to how he gets his briskets so salty and delicious both inside and out. Is this barbecue theory confirmed, convincing, or just plain crazy? That's what we're going to find out in this video, so let's get smoking. For this experiment, I'm wet brining two briskets for 10 days at different salinity levels, and then I'm going to see if the briskets taste similar to the brisket I ate when I was at Franklin Barbecue in Austin. I started by trimming both briskets down to exactly nine pounds. Now, the reason I did this is one, I heard a rumor, I don't know if this is true, that Aaron Franklin uses eight to nine pound briskets in his restaurant. And two, most importantly, a smaller brisket will brine a lot faster, but more on that in just a minute. Next, I'm placing the first brisket in a tub and adding enough water to fully submerge it. There's a scale underneath the tub to measure the exact weight of both the brisket and the water. And once I have the total weight, I'm adding exactly 1% salt by total weight of the brisket and the water combined. That means the water surrounding the brisket will start at 1.4% salinity. And as it diffuses into the brisket and it brines over the next 10 days, the entire system, both the water and the brisket, will reach exactly 1% salt by weight. In other words, it will come to an equilibrium over time over the next 10 days, and it will be consistently salty throughout the brisket at exactly 1%, and it'll be consistent from brisket to brisket if I wanted to do this over and over again. In contrast, if we did something like gradient brining, like I did in my last video on this subject, we would apply some salt or rub on on the outside of the brisket and brine it for a shorter period of time like overnight or one or two days and the outside of the brisket would be very salty let's say it would be two three six percent salinity and the inside of the brisket would be decreasingly salty as you get to the center because that salt hasn't had a long time to penetrate and diffuse into the center of the brisket so that's why it's called gradient brining there's gradients of salinity from the center all the way to the outside edge of the meat and as a result with that type of brining we get an inconsistently brined brisket and it's hard to replicate the salinity and saltiness level from brisket to brisket so it's not very consistent it's like when you brine a turkey overnight or a brisket overnight where you apply the rub and you let the brisket sit in the fridge or you brine a turkey in water for 24 hours the outside of the meat's going to be very salty but the inside of the meat the very interior of the meat is not going to be salty at all now let's talk about how i arrived at 10 days of brining if we take a look at professor greg blonder's equilibrium wet brine calculator here we can see that a two inch flat piece of meat such as the flat muscle of a brisket can fully brine in five days but if we're talking about the point muscle of a brisket that could be as much as four inches thick that could take a whopping 20 days to equilibrium brine but in most cases a a small or medium sized brisket has around a two inch flat and maybe a three inch point. So that works out to around 11 days to fully equilibrium brine the thickest part of the brisket. Someone in my comments had a theory that Franklin barbecue wet brines their brisket for 10 days. So I thought, that seems pretty similar to the results I got on the calculator. It's just one day less than the calculator recommended. So that's why I decided that I would brine for 10 days. Moving on to the second brisket, I placed it in a tub and covered it in water, weighed the entire thing, minus the tub of course, and added 1.75% salt by weight. This is just so I can compare the two briskets and see what level of salt is most similar to what I experienced at Franklin Barbecue. Then both briskets get put in the fridge and I tested the salinity levels of the water in each tub as a baseline test. According to my math, the starting salinity of the 1% brine brisket tub should be 1.4%. When I tested it with a refractometer and an electric salinity meter, they both read 1.5%, so close enough. Mathematically, the 1.75% tub should start at 2.5%, and when I tested it, it was exactly 2.5%. So, so far, so 
good. After 10 days in the fridge, I tested the salinity of the water in the tubs again, and the 1.75% tub was 1.7% according to my instruments, which meant it reached equilibrium. But the 1% tub was at 1.3%, which means that it didn't reach the 1% equilibrium. I'm not quite sure why this happened. It could have been a colder water temperature, maybe because it was closer to the freezer side of the fridge and it got colder. It could have been because there's more fat and interconnective tissue in that particular brisket, although I'm not sure if that affects brining at all. It could have been because maybe some of the water evaporated off, or it could just be because I messed up the initial weighing of the salt that I added to that particular tub. I'm not quite sure, but it did come down in salinity, so that tells me it did get brined to some extent. Now I'm rubbing both briskets with some coarse pepper and then a layer of Franklin barbecue spice rub, which is the rub that Aaron Franklin said he uses on his briskets in an interview with Daniel Vaughn in Texas Monthly. Then I'm smoking both briskets at 250 degrees Fahrenheit for the first four or five hours until they start sweating out a lot of moisture. And then I ramp up to between around 275 to 300 and I continue cooking until they both probe at least 190 internal in all areas of the meat. That means some parts might be 200 by the time it takes another part of the brisket to reach 190. That's what I mean by at least 190. Now I'm removing the briskets from the smoker. I'm wrapping them with a bit of water and holding them at 150 in my sous vide holding chest for around 18 to 20 hours until the next day. Get my gloves on, baby. Get my black pit master gloves on. God, look like children gloves. Oh, there we go. I feel like OJ Simpson wearing these gloves trying to get them on. If the glove don't fit, you must acquit. This is the 1% brisket that was brined in a 1% salt solution. So we're going to open this up. Mmm. Ooh. Ooh, ooh. Oh yeah. Oh baby. Mmm. Hello, I love you. Won't you tell me your name? First thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut it right about, yeah. There we go. Just get rid of that pesky chunk of flat that no one likes anyway, it's super dry. I'm gonna put the brisket up like this and then we're gonna do some a Japanese samurai action. Achia! Okay, let's try this out. Again, this is the 1% brine brisket. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is really good. Mm. This is it, guys. This is it, I'm telling you. It's salty. But it's not too salty, but you can taste the salt throughout the entire piece of meat. And it just has this little bit of almost like a lemony kind of tartness to it because there's so much salt in the actual meat itself. That might actually be from the rub, I'm not sure, but it does taste very, very close to what I tasted at Franklin Barbecue. So I think we're onto something here, but I'm gonna taste a piece of the flat first. Flat's really good as well. Really, 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 really good. Wow. 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 I sound like Owen Wilson. Wow. So now I'm tasting a piece that doesn't have any salt in the middle of it. Yeah. So I tasted a piece that didn't have any bark on it or anything. It was just the center of one of the slices of the flat and it didn't taste salty at all, which is kind of weird. And that tells me that maybe the brine didn't penetrate all the way to the center, but it definitely penetrated to other areas of the brisket. And this brisket is one of the better briskets I've ever made in my life. So I think we're onto something here, guys. I think we're onto something. I might have to tweak the brine, maybe the temperature in the fridge. There's something going on that's slowing down the brining action. I gotta solve for that, but I think that once I do, it's gonna be a pretty damn amazing brisket. Mm. Okay, let's try the 1.75% brine brisket and see if that tastes any better. <laughs> All right, I'll just cut this one normally. I won't do Samurai Steve action. Cut this a little, right about, mm, right about there. Okay. Oh, that smells good. Oh, smells really good. Okay, let's see what we got here. Okay, save those for burnt ends and I'll get some slices of the point to... Three, 
four. And uh oh, I got juices. Juices leaking. Leakage alert. Leakage alert. Crisis averted. Let's get this soaked in tallow a little bit. We'll do the pull test. Actually, it's better than the last one. And let's try this out. <sighs> got big expectations for this, guys. It's really good. I'd say it tastes as salty. Actually, it's a little bit more salty than the first one. I initially thought it was as salty as the first one, but once you eat a lot of salty meat, you kind of go salt blind. Your tongue doesn't pick up on the salt as much as it normally does if you have a clean palate. So this is definitely a little bit more salty. It is really freaking good though. Let's take a slice of <clears throat> the flat. See how it pulls apart? Now that's kind of not cut with the grain, but if you look at it with where it's cut against the grain, it does pull apart quite easily. Okay. Mmm, so good. So good. And again, it has this lemony kind of tartness or acidity that just hits the sides of your tongue. I'm not sure if that's from the Franklin rub or from the salt that's penetrated into the meat, but it is very similar to what I tasted at Franklin Barbecue. Okay, so this was a piece that was in the center of the brisket. It is a little bit salty, but it's definitely not as salty as the edges. So I'm gonna conclude here that this brisket probably did not come to an equilibrium brine within the 10 days that I brined it. It would have probably taken a lot longer. However, I don't know why the brining action was going so slow. It could have been my fridge was too cold or I messed up the weight of the salt or something like that, but it's gonna take some more experimentation. Yeah, I just tasted some more of the bark and the acidity is definitely coming from the rub that's on the bark. So I think that's what's uh, hitting the sides of my tongue and creating that delicious lemony flavor. So in conclusion, the 1% brine brisket was the closest I've ever come to replicating the experience I had eating brisket at Franklin Barbecue. And that's after a lot of experimentation with different levels of salt brine and dry brining and different ingredients and trying different rubs out. But is that proof that Aaron Franklin wet brines his briskets? Of course not. We would need some firsthand accounts or some other evidence to corroborate with this evidence and then maybe we can get closer to strengthening this theory or just disproving it outright. But for now, is this barbecue theory confirmed, convincing, or just plain crazy? I would say it's convincing. If you look at other restaurant industries industries outside of barbecue, they're always looking for ways to inject more flavor into their meats, whether that's salt or flavor enhancers like MSG or beef base or beef flavor or some other types of concentrated flavor. They always are looking at ways to enhance that meat. So it wouldn't be surprising to me if a barbecue restaurant was trying to do the same thing. I wouldn't expect a barbecue restaurant that's in the Texas Monthly Top 50 to just do the same old thing they've been doing for the past 20, 30, 50, 100 years, whatever, and just hope that they continue to come out on top. They need to continually innovate, otherwise they're not going to make that list, and otherwise they're probably not going to feel very fulfilled as chefs and business owners and people who want to make the best product possible. So I think that there is room for this theory, and I think it's pretty convincing, and I think that there are some barbecue restaurants out there that do wet brining, and definitely some of them do dry brining for some amount of time, but we just just don't know until they come out and 100% say this is what we do and they give a tell all. So until that time, wet brining is a convincing theory, but it's not confirmed. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to follow my journey on making the perfect brisket possible. And if you guys want to get more involved in the Smoke Trails Barbecue community, you can join the Smoke Trails Barbecue Nerds Facebook group if you're into Facebook. You can follow me on Instagram. You can join my Patreon. I'll link it below. Just a really awesome community there of people that have awesome ideas about barbecue and we're always nerding out about barbecue, trying to hit that next level, make that perfect brisket. So I hope to see you there and I'll definitely see you in the next video. But until then, happy smoking.